Hello and welcome to Advantage One RV, everybody. My name is Josh, the RV nerd. This is an Eagle 371. I forget the alphabet, Sue, but quad slide. It's a rear entertainment, dual opposing living slides, kitchen slide with just a huge countertop. If you're a campsite chef, ah, you're going to love this thing. And a big bed slide up here, washer, dryer, prep, partridge, and a pear tree. It's been used, not abused. So there's going to be a couple things like the chairs show a little bit of wear on them. This is the kind of rig you're you're just saving a mint compared to brand new you swap a new sofa into it you laugh all the way to the bank you personalize it you make it yours uh whether a big coach like this a lot of times uh people like to just maybe park at like a seasonal site i haven't found a single thing on this that concerns me about its towing ability though this is a solid built coach there are some people uh who uh ha have a feeling that the uh the jacos that were made before the thor acquisition were the better jacos uh, I'm not saying that one way or the other. What I'm saying is, if you feel that way, here you go. Here's one of those. And this is one of those floor plans that hits me right in the member berries. Uh, my, my parents had a, uh, a designer 36 REQS and then eventually a pinnacle 36 REQS, which was effectively the same layout. And I'm standing on the upper deck stairs right now, giving you like a little quick look around. But, you know, for a lot of years... Family camping looked a lot like this. They never had the Eagle version, but it ain't that far departed, you know. This thing is cool because it has such a good definition of clarity of living room versus kitchen, which is, I think, what my parents always liked about it. Well, actually, <laughs> if we're going to be just totally transparent, I think what my mom liked about it is that she had this awesome kitchen peninsula where she could keep me and my dad out of her way while she was preparing stuff. <laughs> because I don't think my dad really cared. He goes, hey, as long as it's a nice fifth wheel, I don't mind. Now, I'm going to sit down at one of these uh, Euro rocker recliner jobs over here. And I've purposely scooted that sofa over, not to trigger your OCD or anything like that. But first of all, just to showcase, that is a, not, not the factory original couch. You might notice it doesn't match any of the decor. That's kind of one of the cool things about a little bit older coach like this. It feels like... If you buy a new RV and start remodeling, redecorating, it feels like you wasted a ton of money. On a used RV, it feels like an opportunity. And I don't know why. In theory, it shouldn't matter, but it does. I also did it to kind of showcase the fact that behind that thing, you've just got that gigantic panoramic window. And wait till we go outside and get a better look at that. Uh, the ceiling fan here, I don't know if that was added aftermarket or if that was uh, upgraded. It's certainly not a Jayco ceiling fan. I kind of like it, though. Uh, uh, in a way, it almost stands out as like a, a very modern thing in what is otherwise a very warm, toned down, classic kind of interior. Got the mini, they used to call this ledge stone uh, fireplace. They used to have a full wall that you could option into it sometimes. And that is a televator. The TV does pop straight up and down, which does mean that you don't necessarily have uh, like a, a, a seat directly across from it, which people didn't used to care about. And now we do. But remember this thing over here? Well, I think what I would do is I would probably find a way to put over there something like an L lounge where you have like almost a sectional style sofa so that part of the, the seating would actually like the back of the seat would be right up against the countertop right there. And then you're facing directly onto it, almost like a modern uh, rear entertainment front living or something like that. Personally, I think that'd be very cool. But over here, these chairs are free floating. Got to sneeze. <laughs> Pardon me. Okay. <clears throat> I uh, must be allergic to nice RVs. <laughs> a little technical snifficulty there. We've got uh, these two chairs can pivot. They can they can rock. Uh, they they can turn. They can do all kinds of nice fun things. Classic full in the slide overhead storage. And as we get over here, the table's gonna look a little bit dinky. But notice that little split in the middle. That does have an extension there. During the day, it just leaves you more room in the walkway. But if, you know, it's dinner time and we've got guests over, we're playing cards, you can make it a little bit longer. Just to kind of give you another perspective on that space right there. Since this doesn't have an island, I can't just keep walking around it, which once again is one of the things that my mom liked. She liked the fact that she could effectively put a baby safety gate over at the, uh, the end of that peninsula, which wasn't, you know, we didn't have children with us. It was so that me and my dad, the, the grown-up children, would stay out of the kitchen and stop messing with stuff. <laughs> it's like that movie, A Christmas Story, where the dad's constantly picking little pieces off the turkey, although uh, that was a turkey that wasn't cooked. Uh, I'm not sure uh, he really knew much about, you know, 
my old friend Salmonella. <laughs> uh, I mean, hang on. Not that I've had Salmonella. Oh, no. <laughs> my amazing way to phrase things brilliantly has struck again. But again, everything wraps right around the campsite cook right here. Oh, I forgot a little bonus drawer down there below the fridge. I'm eyeballing it. I, I've always struggled to tell the difference between an 8 and a 10 cubic foot gas electric fridge. You don't find 10 cubic foots very often in today's market anymore. But it used to be, it was like one of the biggest refrigerators you could get uh, in, in a, a higher end fifth wheel, you know. Now there is a fourth drawer up top there. I just wanted to extend all the way open and block the view of everything else that we had. And I, I think the only thing I would do in this kitchen is like, it's a little dark, I apologize, but if we look over here under the sink, you see it's it's like triple doors and all shelf space. I would shave back one of those shelves to, uh, I think, create like a little wastebasket space. I think that's like the only thing this kitchen needs is a good spot for a wastebasket. Now, just to warn you, like if you're using noise canceling headphones or something like that, uh, the batteries are getting a little bit low and the CO detector is starting to chirp real loud. You might want to turn down your speakers. I've had that happen before where like I was uh, watching something and all of a sudden there's just this loud beep that wasn't in the rest of the video and it just about makes your eardrums bleed. I, I just want to give you the heads up there. There it is. It's probably going to happen a couple more times. Bigger vent fan here in the bathroom. Lots of floor space. A larger radius shower, which is nice, and it looks like they maybe had uh, added like a little sunlight blocker on there. There's something else on the outside of the RV that I uh, saw that I think when they were using this, they probably went to Sun Country and just blocked out all the lights and windows and vents. And up here in the bedroom, it will not take very long for you to realize that uh, this RV could probably use a new mattress. Uh, there's something about this one. I can't quite put my finger on it. It just, I don't know, it just feels, it, it's pretty firm. You know what I mean? It's really firm on my back, and this mattress keeps giving me splinters. <laughs> I, I joke, obviously. My, my guess is the folks had put in the, their own fancy mattress that they wanted to keep with them. Maybe they they're, they must have updated to a new RV. I get that. Now, um, kind of a uh, an atypical bedroom arrangement, but it's one that I've always personally really liked. It just feels more homey to me. I don't know. The way that that extra closet space and stuff is set up over there. Now, this second air conditioner that's installed, this is bedroom only. It's a direct dump air, so that doesn't pump centralized air down into the living room. But if you leave your bedroom door open, cold air falls. It'll actually walk its way down the stairs. And trust me, it will do that very, very effectively, surprisingly. Um, more than once, I've actually uh, heard from my parents. They have a big 50 amp fifth wheel. And if they can't uh, find a 50 amp site and have to use 30 amp service before you were able to, uh, in the older years of RVs, you had to kind of select, do I use both airs or just the living room air? Well, they would actually just throw their mattress uh, on the floor in the living room and just stay down there with one air conditioner, you know, so there you go. Now, um, it, it's funny. This has kind of taken me back a little bit. So many people used to look at these Jayco's and say, what a, what a bunch of fools. I can't believe they didn't even uh, put washer-dryer prep in this thing. If you pull those drawers out, that's where the washer-dryer prep is actually located. is behind them. Jago just gave you nice dresser drawers. And it is so funny how many people did this. This cabinet up here was designed if you wanted to put a flat-screen TV into it. But if you look, there's screw holes over here. The door actually used to open the other direction, but so many people would look at it and say, that door opens the wrong way. You can't even use it. Well, you notice how there's that black bracket installed in there? What this was designed for, and there's even the original gas strut, is you would pop that panel out, you'd install a TV there, you'd use the bracket to hold it, and then the TV would angle out toward you. But when this was made, not as many people were adding TVs into their bedrooms. So a ton of people did exactly what these folks did. They took the strut off and uh, they flipped the door around to make it easier daytime storage. And you know, it's pretty minor, but uh, I've only notated, uh, notated, noted, uh, take a note of one, I don't know, noteworthy <laughs> defect on the outside. And boy, is this minor, just a little skin blemish. When this was first made, you see that funny little outline right there? There was this little plastic reflective, kind of like a mirror, 
that would help you, uh, you know, if you couldn't necessarily see your kingpin when you were backing up, like if you had a, a truck bed cover rolled up, that has popped off. And uh, it took just a little bit of the, uh, the candy coating off that nose cap with it, but uh, it ain't really hurting nothing. And consider that that's, that's less of a blemish than I have on the hood of my car. Uh, I don't know that I'm too awful offended by that. You might have noticed too, the strong arm stabilizer jack leg supports under here. These things are the business. Sometimes you'll see people say, oh, get like a, a tripod for the kingpin on your fifth wheel. I'm not saying they're not, they don't do nothing. They are not nearly as effective as those jack leg stabilizers though. Those will absolutely have this thing feeling like it is locked down on a concrete pad. They are 100% of the height. They live up to it. Now that is a big drop frame basement space right there. And if you uh, uh, are noticing here, we've actually got dual awnings. This is uh, kind of cool. So up front here, we've got the factory original power awning. And then back over here on the super slide, they added after the fact an additional awning. Now that's a manual awning, but one of the cool things about manual awnings, it's, it's sad. There are certain times where a classic thing that was really, really awesome just isn't found in the RV industry anymore. Not all progress is 100% positive. Sometimes there's a give and a take. Manual awnings, if you wanna stake those things down, I'm not saying you can leave them out and Hurricane Ida wins, but uh, <laughs> short of that, you can really lock those suckers down if you're interested. Although if it is really windy, my recommendation is to always put them away. Now behind that slide, you see a little white rail? That's actually a little uh, grilling station. There's a little propane cooker hooker down there. Now this was made before these big fifth wheels really had like auto leveling available. This is power front leveling, power rear stabilizer jacks. That's just the best it got when this came out. And if you're looking around all the windows, you might notice these little dots and you might be wondering what the heck is that? Those are little snap-on spots for uh, like window covers. And it makes me wonder if this RV wasn't used in like just a real i uh, see i'm not sure because the first thing i thought of when i saw those is that man this thing must have been parked in sun country where they really had to block the sun from turning those windows into a greenhouse and holy crap look at that look at that uh that that window there in the living room that is just so awesome that's a conversation piece right there in and of itself but the the rv is not like sun baked so i don't think it's been sitting in sun country all that long so then I thought, okay, well, what about cold camping? Well, usually if you're cold camping, the first thing you're going to do is skirt the RV, but I don't see where that had been done. So I don't know. Maybe they just camped in a place where they wanted 100% privacy. The tires look good. I don't see uh, any funky wear patterns. Hold on, let me check the date code on these. Okay, it's upside down, but that says 4515. That means that this tire was made on the 45th week of 2015. Uh, so just doing some quick rough maths and it's roughly six or seven years old. There's different, uh, trains of thought on this. A lot of people subscribe to the idea that, uh, if a tire is over three years old, you need to really keep an eye on it. If it's over five years old, you should be swapping it out. Some people will go up to six or seven years. Some people will go up to 10. I am of the belief. Uh, I, I don't have a problem with swapping them out at five. If a tire is 10 years old, whether it looks good or not, I, I'm going to swap it out of there. You do what works for you. I just want to give you that extra information so you can plan accordingly. So if you did plan to just have this thing delivered and parked, I don't know that I'd necessarily worry about swapping them out. But if your plan was to, to tow it around, to move it around, I would at least, uh, you know, in your own little personal budgeting spreadsheet or whatever, kind of price out some, some new tires, sort of see what that's going to look like for you so that you have a better idea of a total cost of ownership. Now, uh, it, it looks like it's been cleaned up here regularly. The roof looks very, the membrane looks very healthy. The seals around that skylight, that's had a full peel and seal. I will say though, that's the, that and the TV antenna have had a full peel and seal. Everything else, it actually still looks like original factory sealant, which is really beginning to tell me more of the story here. Cause I was really confused about those window coverings. I have a very high level of confidence now doing some RV CSI that when this thing was not in use, it was stored indoors, which is why the exterior still looks fantastic. And while we're still looking at uh, what I believe are original factory seals, anything that looks like this, which is basically other than the two fixtures I told you have been peeled and sealed, these, frankly, 
they need a full peel and seal. If you're going to store, store it outdoors, especially in the Midwest, before the snowflakes hit, like it's not leaking right now, it's fine right now, but I don't know that I would want it to sit outside with rain and snow and freeze and thaw back and forth a hundred times until spring comes. I think if you did that, there's about a 50-50 shot. You wouldn't like what you found in the spring. And it, this is a case of an ounce of prevention is worth just a pound of cure. So give us a call. Uh, if you don't have a towing vehicle, if you're like me, you got a little Kia Soul, you got a Geo Metro, whatever, a Dodge Neon, ain't gonna tow this thing very far. Um, <laughs> Although I'd love to see somebody try. <laughs> Reminds me, uh, it'd be like a, a more exaggerated version of that old footage where someone's got a, a tiny fifth wheel hooked up to the top of a VW bug. Although that thing was actually pretty darn cool, you have to admit. But um, something like this, we can just have it delivered for you. You don't even got to worry about it. You don't need a tow vehicle. Or let me throw this idea at you. You're like, yeah, I, I want to... I got a house here in the Midwest, but I want to go south where it's warmer in the in the winter. I get that. The older I get, the less I like the cold, too. Um, also, you may not realize that there's some very uh, unknown statute that in Michigan, once you hit retirement age, when the, when the weather drops below freezing, you got to go to Florida. We kick you out. A lot of people don't know that. I don't know if that's true or not. Sure, uh, there, I bet, though, if you looked at the correlation graph, you'd see that that has like a really high correlation coefficient. <laughs> but my point is, Instead of spending all the money on a pickup, because you need, th this is real truck country, your one ton truck here. Uh, maybe there's a super duper heavy three quarter that can handle it, but for the most part, my general recommendation here's a one ton. I don't know that you need to go to dually, but single rear wheel or above. Um, instead of spending all that money, just have somebody to deliver it once or twice. It, you know, maybe it's a $1,200 delivery charge. I don't know if that's accurate, but that's a heck of a lot less than truck payments for an entire year think about that and then you're not white knuckling it going through the Appalachian Mountains you don't got to worry about all that nonsense or spend half a day driving all the way around them which I've done both actually I, I don't really dislike either I enjoy the road experience it just I enjoy doing something different for a change I'm disconnected and I'm involved with my family at that point road trip you know what I mean that's what camping is to me although I don't know if that's camping so much as some pretty nice glamping I have talked a long time <laughs> Sorry. No wonder my wife drinks. <laughs> so take care. <laughs> Stay safe. Have fun. And have an A1 day, everyone.